Hi, everyone. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. Thank you for joining us today. I'm coming to you from New Jersey. I'm Michelle Leo, Vice President, Director of Education and Library Marketing. And we're here to welcome you to the Overdrive in the Know presentation with Simon & Schuster Education and Library. Nicole, would you put up the first slide, please? Thank you. Uh, so as I said, I'm Michelle Leo, Vice President, Director of Education and Library Marketing. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today with Simon & Schuster's Overdrive's In the Know presentation. I'm the daughter of two librarians, and I've spent a lot of uh, my years <laughs> and my childhood in libraries. I joined Simon & Schuster in 1998 as a marketing assistant in the children's division, but most of my 24 years here have been in the Education and Library Marketing Group. And today you'll hear from me and my colleagues, Melissa Croce and Nicole Benevento. The Simon & Schuster Education and Library Marketing Group is responsible for marketing our adult and children's books to pre-K to 12 teachers, college professors, and school and public librarians. Next slide, please, Nicole. We work hard to support teachers and librarians like you, and we thank you for the work you do. Here are some resources that we hope you will find helpful in your jobs. First, you may visit simonandschuster.net, our website geared specifically towards educators and librarians to stay up to date on the newest books, resources, reading group, and book club guides, as well as events that we participate in. On our website, you can also sign up for our monthly librarian e-newsletters. You have the option to choose from adult or children's teacher librarian, or you may sign up for both. We also hope that you will stay in touch with us on social media. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and find us on Pinterest. Our handle is at S-S-E-D-L-I-B. If, like if you'd like to request advanced e-galleys from Simon & Schuster, you can find them on Edelweiss and NetGalley and we'll be happy to approve you. And finally, you may also email us with any questions or requests you have for our team at education.library at simonandschuster.com. Next slide, please, Nicole. We have two seasonal book recommendation programs for librarians. The book pantry features our children's titles, while the book drop highlights adult titles. Both include staff picks and collection development su suggestions. You may view them as a website, which also has a downloadable brochure for easy browsing. Next slide, please. We offer two additional children's librarian resources, Kaleidoscope and Flip. Kaleidoscope is a website and annual brochure that features our diverse books. And Simon & Schuster is proud to be a children's publishing, children's, um, Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing is proud to be a FLIP discovery partner. This online community, formerly known as Flipgrid, is, compri is comprised of over 100 million monthly educators, students, and families across 190 countries, from pre-K to, pre to PhD. You can visit our current library for videos, guides, and discussion prompts, as well as archives of live events, like the one we did with Sharon Draper for Out of My Heart. Next slide, please. And for adult librarians, we offer several programs to support you and your patrons. Check out our One Book, One Community website for resources and recommendations for your next One Book community read. Get involved with our Book Club Favorites program. Join the club and join the conversation gather resources and reading group guides, hear from our authors, and see which ones are available for your book clubs. Discover powerful stories and diverse voices with Simon & Schuster's Books Like Us website. Here you'll find author videos, selected lists, and resources for curating a diverse collection. Next slide, please. And finally, we're so thrilled that you joined us today but we would also like to invite you to two virtual preview events that we will be holding for our spring 2023 season. 
Our teacher and librarian virtual preview event for children's will be on Wednesday, October 26th from four to five, featuring Kelly Yang. Uh, she's most famous for her front desk series, but she's written two middle grades for Simon & Schuster. This new one, finally seen, will be out in the spring. And our adult preview with, yes, you see that correctly, a brand new book from Jeanette Walls, one of my all-time favorite authors, um, most famous for The Glass Castle, of course. Her preview event with us will be virtual on Wednesday, November 9th. And if you'd like to join us, simply email us at education.library at simonandschuster.com with the subject line, children's preview or adult preview, and we'll be happy to add you to the invitation list. Now I'll turn things over to Nicole, who will present our children's titles. Thanks so much for your attention. Nicole? Thanks, Michelle. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Nicole Benevento, and I am the Simon & Schuster Children's Library Marketing Manager. I'll go ahead and kick things off with our children's book buzz portion of our presentation by showing off some of our stunning starred reviews from 2022 that you'll definitely wanna make sure you have on your radar. With five starred reviews, we have Mina. From the creator of the acclaimed and beloved Poco and the Drum comes an emotionally resonant picture book about trust, worry, and loyalty between a father and daughter. Mina and her father live in a hollowed out tree stump on the edge of a pond on the edge of a forest. Nothing ever bothers Mina until one day her father brings home a suspicious surprise from the woods. Should Mina trust her father or listen to her own instincts? From award-winning artist John Para comes a touching and deceptively simple picture book with four starred reviews based on his childhood experience helping his dad in his landscaping business. Kirkus calls it a heartwarming family story that underscores the value of creativity, passion, and hard work. It celebrates the bond between a father and son, and it is perfect for Hispanic Heritage Month. It's also, there's also a Spanish edition of this title available as well. Isla de Island is a stunning wordless graphic novel with four star reviews that follows a young girl in the 1960s who immigrates from Cuba to the United States and must redefine what home means to her. This book starts off in full color and transitions to mostly black and white once she arrives in America, only to be filled in with color as she becomes more comfortable in her new home. And with a stunning eight star reviews, prepare yourself from something unlike anything, a smash up of art and text for teens that viscerally captures what it's like to be black in America right now. Written by the Jason Reynolds and illustrated by Jason's longtime best friend, Jason Griffin. Both Isla to Island and Ain't Burned All the Bright are gorgeous combinations of text and art that are perfect for reluctant and struggling readers. The stories will motivate them to continue on and the illustrations and graphic style will assist with comprehension. Next, we'll move into some of our summer and fall 2022 picture book highlights. From the team behind the New York Times bestselling and Caldecott honor winning Creepy Carrots and Creepy Pair of Underwear comes the third in this hilariously spooky series about a young rabbit and his peculiar encounters featuring a sinister crayon. In this new addition to the collection, Jasper has a purple crayon that gives him every answer to every test he takes, which is great until Jasper starts to feel guilty for not earning his grades. Trouble is creepy crayons are hard to get rid of. This is a delightfully spooky book that shows that cheaters never win and that it's always best to do your own work. In action, master nonfiction picture book creator Megan McCarthy tells the story of how motion pictures came to be invented and the story of the many people who helped create them. Starting with films beginning in 1915, sorry, 1815, and going to Thomas Edison to Charlie Chaplin and present day, this is an overview of how movies are made and the history of that invention. In her trademark, easy to follow narrative voice and with fascinating detail, Megan McCarthy shows how early photography capturing motion became silent films, which led to the first color films and the beloved movies we know today. In the talk, meet Jay, a little guy who loves his besties, his grandpa, his dad's cool car, and when his mother measures him. But as the pencil marks itch upward, Grandpa warns Jay about gathering in two large groups with his friends, and Dad explains how to act if the police ever pull him over as they're driving in that cool car. Jay needs the talk. With warmth and love, Newberry honoree Alicia D. Williams introduces us to a highly sensitive, hard-pinching, yet direly needed discussion about being Black and Brown in a racist world. 
with sumptuous piercing illustrations by a debut first generation Nigerian American illustrator and a perfect double page spread pause for parents to insert their old, own discussions with their children. The talk provides a visual launch pad to help parents find these hard words to teach all kids about racism so that someday this book won't ever be needed again. From beloved author and illustrator Rosemary Wells comes a brand new Max and Ruby story about Max surprising Grandma and Ruby when he finds a way to read an instruction book that no one else can figure out. When the mail carrier brings a big package from their uncle in Bulgaria to the house, Max turns to his reading is fun book to help understand the instructions. But the book doesn't help one bit, and Ruby is too busy. Grandma reserves a Bulgarian dictionary at the library, but the interlibrary loan will take weeks. It's Max to the rescue in this clever and satisfying story that shows children that they can take the initiative and problem solve when they need to. Celebrate the Lunar New Year in A Sweet New Year for Wren, a charming picture book that includes a recipe for pineapple cakes illustrated by New York Times bestselling artist, Dung Ho. Little Wren looks forward to the preparation and festivities of Lunar New Year, but she is always too little to help with the making of the delicious pineapple cakes, which are her favorite. Watching and waiting, when will Ren be old enough? Finally, this year is different. Everyone is together to enjoy, and her family starts the new year together, thankful for each other and for their traditions. Now we'll move into fall 2022 middle grade highlights, starting off with Stella Loon. The millions of fans of Shannon Messenger's Keeper of the Lost City series will be rejoicing this fall as Stella Loon, book nine in the mega hit middle grade series, goes on sale in November. Keeper is the story of Sophie Foster, a girl who spent the first 12 years of her life believing she was human, only to find out she's actually a powerful elf. The elven world of the Lost Cities that Shannon has created rivals that of Harry Potter with fantastical places, mysterious powers, and plenty of mythical creatures. The series also explores themes of right and wrong and what it means to question societal norms and authority. In Stellar Loon, things will come into sharp focus and the ultimate big bad and her terrifying agenda are finally revealed. Fans will be shocked to find out what it's all been leading up to. In Barbara Dee's latest novel, Haven Jacobs Saves the Planet, Haven Jacobs challenges her anxiety about, sorry, cha channels, not challenges her anxiety, channels her anxiety about climate change into organizing protests and rallying her community to save a local river while investigating the large corporation that she suspects is contributing to the river's pollution. The effect of global warming is nothing new, but this past year especially has put this issue at the forefront and extreme weather highlighting on a macro level the issues Haven and her friends discover in this story. This book fits in perfectly with Barbara Dee's stellar award-winning backlist and is certainly one to watch. Now you may know Maria Inahosa from her Pulitzer, Emmy, and Peabody winning work as a journalist or from her memoir for adults, Once I Was You. She's also the anchor and executive producer of the weekly NPR show, Latino USA, and an anchor of the Emmy award-winning talk show, Maria Inahosa One-on-One. -on -One. Maria has written a completely new version of her adult book for young readers that explores her own childhood and teen years, from her birth in Mexico to her family's fraught journey to the U.S., to growing up in Chicago at the crux of, so of social movements and societal change. Her narration reads like a savvy, loving older sister sharing nuggets of wisdom, and her frank approach to America's history of immigration and immigrants evokes the spirit of Jason Reynolds in Stamped. We'll follow with a Spanish language edition of this title in early spring 2023, so make sure to add that to your collections as well. Now over to our fall 22 young adult titles. Just when you thought Neil Schusterman's Ark of the Scythe series that started with the Prince Honor winner Scythe was over, I am happy to tell you that it's not. Gleanings is a collection of stories that expands the Scythe universe in all directions. After all, thousands of years have passed between the time the thunder had eradicated death on our world and the events of the first three books. These stories feature beloved characters, hated villains, backstories, new updates, and a whole bunch of folks, scythes or otherwise, we've yet to meet. We've seen a ton of excitement for this next edition, so we're sure your patrons are just itching to get their hands on it. In Foul Lady Fortune, the brilliant Chloe Gong is back with the start of a new historical fantasy duology, loosely based on Shakespeare's As You Like It. It's set in 1930 Shanghai and follows a familiar character from Chloe's first duology. 
To answer for her past crimes, Rosalind Lang has become the Nationalist Party's feared assassin of the night, codenamed Fortune. When a series of murders cause unrest in Shanghai, Rosalind is sent to infiltrate foreign society, identify the people leading the terror plot, and swiftly dispense justice. She also has to pose as the young wife of another nationalist spy, Orion Hong. Not that that will cause any problems. Rosalind soon finds herself tangled in the deepening mystery full of the daring twists and turns that only Chloe can dream up in a brilliant reimagining of a dangerous and alluring Shanghai. And let's not forget Blood Marked, the highly anticipated sequel to Tracy Dion's New York Times and indie bestselling Legendborn. Legendborn was only the second fantasy novel to ever win the Coretta Scott King John Steptoe for New Talent Author Award from the ALA. Fans will not be disappointed by this sequel, which turns the dial up to 11 on everything they learned about book one. This series truly walks the line between commercial and literary, including everything from demon slaying, secret societies, and love triangles, to a more serious and timely discussion about a Black girl who must navigate a world that was not built for her. Not just the South, but also the traditionally white legend of King Arthur that Black people have long found themselves shut out of. It is a sequel, sequel truly worth the wait. From Dr. Seema Yasmin, epidemiologist, journalist, CNN correspondent, and leading expert on media literacy comes the most important book many of us have ever worked on, and it already has two starred reviews. What the Fact is a guide to misinformation, disinformation, and the truth about where our media comes from, how lies spread, and most importantly, what we can do about it. What Stamp did for talking about racism, what the fact does for tackling the most important threat to our society, a lack of media literacy. And SEMA does it with such an accessible voice, as well as charts and graphs throughout that help explain some of the harder to digest information. This is one of the most timely books we all need right now, and we're so pleased to finally be able to share it with you all. On a very different note, we have The Do-Over by Lynn Painter. In this riotous young adult romp for fans of Recommended For You and A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow, a teen girl has the worst Valentine's Day ever, only to relive it over and over again. Lynn Painter's previous book, Better Than the Movies, blew up on Book Talk to an enthusiastic fan base. And with this new standalone title coming in November, this is the perfect book to suggest to patrons needing more Lynn Painter or to those waiting for their hole to come in. And lastly, for our fall 22 teen titles, we have A Wilderness of Stars. In this magical romance from the number one New York Times bestselling author of Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, an illness cursing the land forces a teen girl astronomer to venture across the wilderness in search of the stars message that will hopefully save them all. Shay Earnshaw is another author with an impressive backlist collection. And with Long Live the Pumpkin Queen currently taking the world by storm, we're so looking forward to seeing readers jump to a wilderness of stars for their next page turning fall fantasy read. Now let's transition a bit into our spring 2023 preview for children's titles, starting off with some picture books. In Every Life is a simple and profound meditation on the, win on the many wonders of life from two-time Caldecott Honor recipient, Martha Frazee. In every life, there is love and loss, hope and joy, wonder and mystery. With glowing art and spare powerful text, creator Marla Frazee celebrates the moments, feelings, and experiences, both big and small, that make up a life. The illustrations are stunning in this one, and with this gentle message, we know it will soon become a go-to book for parent-child story times and bedtimes. Here's one we hope you will all get a kick out of. In The Loud Librarian, a little librarian with a larger than life voice finds her place. This is a sweet picture book that is all about being true to yourself, no shushing required. Penelope is perfect for the job of student librarian. Friendly, check. Helpful, check. Book lover, check. There's just one snag. Penelope is loud. <laughs> Bookcases may topple and the ground may quake at the sound of her voice, but Penelope is determined to prove she is perfect for the job and staying true to herself. Can a little librarian with a big voice find a place where she belongs? Spoiler alert, she can. <laughs> and in Ramen for Everyone, an adorable picture book for fans of Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow and Bilal Cook's Doll, Eero aspires to make a bowl of ramen as delicious as his dad's, but runs into some surprises on his first attempt. Eero loves ramen. Every Sunday, Eero's dad makes delicious, perfect ramen for dinner using a recipe passed down from his own dad. Eero's dream is to make his own perfect bowl, and he is sure he can do it after watching his dad and taking notes. 
But when he gets started, things don't go quite according to plan. Iroh is worried that he'll never be a real ramen chef. But thanks to his father's wise advice and his own creativity, Iroh discovers that every person's perfect bowl of ramen is unique. I know there are so many incredible books on this list, but if you're to pay extra special attention to any one of these titles, this is the one. Once There Was is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them meets Neil Gaiman in this thrilling novel about an Iranian-American girl who discovers that her father is secretly a veterinarian to magical creatures and that she must take up his mantle despite the many dangers. Once was, once wasn't. So began the stories Marjan's father told her as a little girl. Fables like the story of the girl who sprung a unicorn from a hunter's snare. Tales of mythical beasts that filled her with curiosity and wonder. But Marjan's not a little girl anymore. In the wake of her father's sudden death, she's trying to hold it together, her schoolwork, friendships, and keeping her dad shoestring veterinary practice from going under. Then one day she receives a visitor who reveals something stunning. Marjan's father was no ordinary veterinarian. The creatures out of the stories he told her were real, and he traveled the world to take care of them. And now that he's gone, she must take his place. Marjan steps into a secret world hidden in plain sight where magical creatures are bought and sold, treasured and trapped. She finds friends she never knew she needed, a charming British boy who grew up with a griffin and a runaway witch seeking magic and a home, while also trying to hide her double life from her old friends and classmates. The deeper Marjan gets into treating these animals, the closer she comes to finding who killed her father and to a shocking truth that will reawaken her sense of wonder and put humans and beasts in the gravest of danger. This is a favorite among Simon & Schuster team members, and we know that once readers pick this one up, they won't be able to put it down. Now moving from magical creatures to something much more real. In this first book in the semi-autobiographical middle grade series from Major League Baseball pitcher Marcus Stroman, a young baseball player learns that perfect games only come with lots of practice and some strikeouts. Everyone is telling Marcus Stroman he will make the elite playing team. They all think he can do it. But what happens when doubt grips Marcus and makes him feel like maybe he won't? It's easy to forget that for every professional sports player, there was a kid just learning the sport and dealing with nerves and shaky confidence. MLB player Marcus Stroman is one of the first professional athletes to address the need for and importance of mental health. And in this new series, he reaches out to kids with a semi-autobiographical character who deals with doubts, literally learns how to breathe, and does some hard work to, to dig deep and hear his own voice. As a former softball player up until college, I can't tell you how helpful this series would have been for me as a child. And we hope it can help young readers everywhere dealing with the pressure that comes from competitive sports. This is not the current cover. This is just a picture of Marcus, but the cover will be to revealed tomorrow on his social media accounts. So stay tuned for that one. And now from the New York Times bestselling author of the Pro Front Desk series comes a gripping middle grade novel about a young girl who's, who leaves China to live with her parents and sister after five years apart and learns about sisterhood, family, and the power of community. When 10-year-old Lena Gao steps off the plane in Los Angeles, it's her first time in America and the first time seeing her parents and her little sister in five years. She's been waiting for this moment every day while she lived with her grandmother in Beijing, getting teased by kids at school who called her left behind girl. Finally, her parents are ready for her to join their fabulous life in America, except it's not exactly like the postcards. As she reckons with her hurt, Lena tries to keep a lid on her feelings both at home and at school. When her teacher starts facing challenges for her latest book selection, a book that deeply resonates with Lena, it will take all of Lena's courage and resilience to get over her fear in order to choose a future where she is finally seen. Kelly Yang is an incredible advocate for the freedom to read and for the AEPI community. And this book really puts the issues we're facing today front and center, and we couldn't be prouder to have it on our list. Perfect for Fans of Enchanted Air by Margarita Engel and Life in Motion by Misty Copeland, the in-between is a middle grade memoir in verse that chronicles a young girl and her family who must start over after losing their home. In the early 2000s, 13-year-old Kate Wingate, Katie Wingate has moved more times than she can count for as long as she can remember. There were the slow moves where you see the whole thing coming. There were the fast ones where you grab what you can in seconds. 
When Katie and her family come back from an out of town funeral, they discover their landlord has unceremoniously evicted them, forcing them to pack lightly and move quickly. They make their way to an extended stay America motel with Katie's mother promising it's temporary. Within the four walls of their new home, Katie tr tries to live a normal life, all while wondering if things would be easier living with their father. Lyrical and forthcoming, Katie navigates the complexities that come with living life in between. In between homes, parents, between childhood and a young adulthood, all while remaining hopeful for the future. And here's another one that we hope you might recognize just a bit. Time to Roll is the eagerly anticipated sequel to Jamie Sumner's acclaimed and beloved middle grade novel, Roll With It. And in this novel, Ellie finds her own way to shine. Ellie is so not the pageant type, but what she's supposed to do when her friend Coralie asks her to enter the beauty pageant and their other best friend, Bert, volunteers to be her manager. Then again, how else is she supposed to get through this summer with her dad who barely knows her while her mom is off on her honeymoon with Ellie's amazing gym teacher? Ellie decides she has nothing to lose. There's only one problem. The director of the pageant seems determined to put Ellie in her wheelchair front and center. So it's up to Ellie to figure out a way to do it on her own terms and make sure her friendships don't fall apart along the way. Jamie Sumner has received so many requests from readers asking her to revisit Ellie's story. And we're so glad that she finally gave us the gift of more Ellie. And on to my last slide, our spring 23 young adult novels. In Chain of Thorns, James and Cordelia must save London and their marriage in this thrilling and highly anticipated conclusion to the last hour series from the number one New York Times and USA Today bestselling author, Cassandra Clare. Chain of Thorns is a Shadowhunters novel. Shadowhunters fans are some of the most enthusiastic readers I have ever seen, memorizing every character and plot detail from the many books in the series and always clamoring for the next installment. Once this one comes out next year, we know you'll have a hard time keeping it on your shelves. And I mean, look at this cover. How can you not, like, how can you keep your hands off this book? And speaking of just stunning covers, we have Delicious Monsters. The Haunting of Hill House meets Sadie in this evocative and mind-bending psychological thriller following two teen girls navigating the treacherous past of a mysterious mansion 10 years apart. Daisy sees dead people something impossible to forget in bustling and ghost-packed Toronto. She usually manages to deal with her unwanted ability, but she's completely unprepared to be dumped by her boyfriend. So when her mother inherits a secluded mansion in Northern Ontario, where she spent her childhood summers, Daisy jumps at the chance to escape. But the house is nothing like Daisy expects, and she begins to realize that her experience with the supernatural might be no match for her mother's secrets, nor what were lurks behind these walls. A decade later, Brittany is desperate to get out from under the thumb of her abusive mother, a best-selling author who claims her stay at Miracle Mansion allowed her to see the error of her ways. But Brittany knows that it's nothing but a sham. She decides a new season of her popular haunted web series will uncover what happened to a young Daisy in the mansion 10 years prior and finally expose her mother's lies. But as she gets more wrapped up in the investigation, she'll have to decide. If she can only bring one story to light, which one matters more, Daisy's or her own? As Brittany investigates the mansion in the present, Daisy's story runs parallel in the past, both timelines propelling the girls to face the most dangerous monsters of all, those that hide in plain sight. Chilling, right? This is another teen title that our team couldn't put down, and we can't wait to hear what readers have to say about it. And lastly, we have Wings in the Wild, a gorgeously romantic contemporary novel in verse from award-winning author Margarita Engel that tells the inspiring love story of two teens fighting for climate action and human rights. Winged beings are meant to be free, and so are artists, but the Cuban government has criminalized any art that doesn't meet their approval. Solida and her parents protest this injustice with their secret sculpture garden of chained birds. When a current, but when a hurricane exposes the illegal art, her parents are arrested. Soledad escapes to Central America alone, joining the thousands of Cuban refugees stranded in Costa Rica while seeking asylum elsewhere. There she meets Dario, a Cuban-American boy whose enigmatic music enchants birds and animals in Soledad. Together they work to protect the environment and bring attention to the imprisoned artists in Cuba. Margarita's novels and verse are like no other, and with this book covering such timely contemporary topics, we hope it will resonate with readers everywhere. 
Well, that's all for me for now. And I'll turn things over to Melissa to take it away with the adult titles. Thanks, Nicole. Um, hi, everyone. I hope you've been enjoying the presentation so far. Um, I'm Melissa Kirchie, and I'm a marketing manager at SNS, specializing in adult titles. And today I'll be presenting a selection of summer 2022, fall 2022, and spring 2023 titles for you today. Uh, first up, we have one summer 2022 title we want to highlight and make sure is on your radar. It is Bully Market, My Story of Money and Misogyny at Goldman Sachs. Um, in this story, Jamie Fury Higgins became one of the first women at the highest rank of Goldman Sachs. Spurred on by the obligation she felt to her working class immigrant family, she rose to the ranks and saw it all. Out of control parties, affairs flouted in the office, rampant drug use, and most pervasively, a discriminatory culture designed to hold back the few women and people of color employed at the company. Despite Goldman Sachs having the right talking points and stats, Jamie soon realized that these provided just a veneer to cover up what she found to be an abusive culture. Her memoir is one filled with shocking stories of harassment and jaw-dropping tales of exclusionary, racist, and misogynistic behavior. Bully Market sounds the alarm on the culture of finance and corporate America while offering clear, actionable ideas for creating a fair workplace. Next. Moving on to fall. This is The Fortunes of Jaded Women by Carolyn Wynn. Everyone in the California community of Little Saigon knows that the Duong family and all of their children are cursed, never to find true love or happiness, and had been since a few generations previous when their ancestor angered their in-law enough for that in-law to seek out a witch to curse their entire line. Desperate, eldest sister Mai visits a psychic who tells her that this year the following will occur, a wedding, a funeral, and the breaking of the curse. Now all Mai has to do is get her estranged, headstrong sisters, nieces, and daughters to come together to make it happen. No big deal. Hilarious at heartwarming, readers who love the works of Kevin Kwan with a dash of Jamie Ford and Amy Tan will adore the saga of the Duong family. This is Fairy Tale by Stephen King. On the surface, Charlie Reed is a regular high school student and athlete, but his home life is bleak with a dead mother and alcoholic father. Things take a turn for the better when he, bef when he befriends a dog, Radar, and its owner, Howard. Charlie even starts to do odd jobs for the reclusive Howard, always staying away from that creepy lock shed in Howard's yard. But when Howard dies, things take a turn for the strange. He's left a message for Charlie that the shed functions as a portal to another world. What happens next? You'll have to read to find out. And from Elena Armas, the author of The Spanish Love Deception, comes the American Roommate Experiment, the eagerly anticipated follow-up featuring Rosie Graham and Lucas Martin. Rosie has a problem. Well, she has a few problems. She just quit her well-paid job to focus on her secret career as a romance writer. She hasn't told her family. And of course, now is when writer's block strikes. Then the ceiling of her New York apartment literally crumbles on her. Luckily, she has her best friend Lena spare key while she's out of town. What Rosie doesn't know is that Lena has already lent her apartment out to her cousin Lucas, who seems intent on coming to Rosie's rescue like a Spanish knight in shining armor. He offers to let Rosie stay with him at least until she can find other housing, but then he proposes an outrageous experiment to bring back her literary muse and meet her deadline. He'll take her on a series of experimental dates meant to jumpstart her romantic inspiration. Rosie has nothing to lose, literally. Her silly crush is totally under control, but Lucas's time in New York has an expiration date and six weeks may not be enough for either her or her deadline. Next. The author of Queenie is back with People Person. If you could choose your family, you would never choose the Penningtons. Dimple Pennington knows of her half siblings, but she doesn't really know them. They're just five people who don't really have anything in common except for a few memories, being driven around Brixton in their dad's gold Jeep, and of course, all of those little complex abandonment issues he left them. Dimple has other things to worry about. She's 30 and her life isn't really going anywhere. She has an awful boyfriend and as an aspiring lifestyle influencer, her life has shrunk down to the size of a phone screen. Despite a small but loyal following, Dimple has never felt more alone in her life. That is until a dramatic event brings her half siblings, Nikisha, Danny, Lizzie and Prince crashing back into her life. And then when they're all forced to reconnect with Cyril Pennington, absent father, owner of Gold Jeep, um, creator of abandonment issues, uh, things get even more complicated. From Candice Cardi Williams, People Person is a vibrant and charming celebration of discovering family as an adult. Next, we have uh, Friedrich Bachmann's The Winners, the long-awaited conclusion to the beloved New York Times bestselling Beartown series. 
Two years have passed since the events that no one wants to think about. Everyone's tried to move on, but there's something about this place that prevents it. As the locals of Beartown struggle to overcome the past, great change is on the horizon. Someone is coming home after a long time away. Someone will be laid to rest. Someone will fall in love. Another will try to fix their marriage and someone will do anything to save their children. Someone will submit to hate. Someone will fight and someone will grab a gun and walk towards the ice rink. In his dazzling number one bestseller, Plum Island, Nelson DeMille introduced readers to NYPD homicide detective John Corey. Fast forward through six more best-selling John Corey no novels and his latest, The Maze, opens with Corey now in forced retirement from his last job as a federal agent with the diplomatic surveillance group. Corey is restless and looking for action. So when his former lover, Detective Beth Penrose, appears at the job, uh, Corey has to one and make some decisions about his career reunited with Beth. Inspired by and based upon an actual and still unsolved Gilgo Beach murders, the maze takes the reader on a dangerous hunt for an apparent serial killer who has murdered nine, and maybe more, sex workers and has hidden their bodies in the thick undergrowth on a lonely stretch of beach. Here we have The Last Chairlift by John Irving, who returns with his first novel in seven years. In Aspen, Colorado in 1941, Rachel Brewster is a skier at the National Downhill Championships. Little Ray, as she's called, finishes nowhere near the podium, but she manages to bring back a souvenir anyway, a pregnancy. Back home in New England, Little Ray becomes a ski instructor. Her son, Adam, grows up in a family that defies conventions and evades questions concerning the eventful past. Years later, looking for answers, Adam will go to Aspen. In the Hotel Jerome where he was conceived, he's going to meet some ghosts. And in the last chairlift, they aren't the first or the last ones he sees. John Irving has written some of the most acclaimed books of our time. And in the last chairlift, readers will once again be in his thrall. And in the highly anticipated It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover, we pick right up where It Ends With Us left off. Lily and her ex-husband, Ryle, have just settled into a civil co-parenting rhythm when she suddenly bumps into her first love, Atlas. After nearly two years separated, she is elated that for once, time is on their side, and she says yes when he asks her on a date. But her excitement is hampered by the knowledge that though they aren't married any longer, Ryle is still very much part of her life, and Atlas is the one man he would hate being in his ex-wife and daughter's lives. Revealing more about Atlas's past and following Lily as she embraces a second chance at true love while navigating a jealous ex-husband, this book once again proves that no one delivers an emotional read like Colleen Hoover. Next. The Secret History Meets Ninth House in the Cloisters by Katie Hayes, a sinister atmospheric novel. When Anne Stilwell arrives in New York City, she expects to spend her summer working as a curatorial associate at the Met. Instead, she finds herself assigned to the Cloisters, a Gothic museum and garden renowned for its medieval art collection and its group of enigmatic researchers studying the history of divination. Desperate to escape her painful past, Anne is happy to indulge the researchers' more outlandish theories about the history of fortune telling. But what begins as academic curiosity quickly turns into obsession when she discovers a hidden 15th century deck of tarot cards that might hold the key to predicting the future. When the dangerous game of power, seduction, and ambition at the cloisters turns deadly and becomes locked in a race for answers as the line between the arcane and the modern blurs. This is The Dawnlands by Philippa Gregory, the third book in the Fair Mile series. It is 1685 and England is on the brink of a renewed civil war against the Stuart Kings and many families are bitterly divided. From the last battle in the desolate Somerset levels to the hidden caves on the slave island of Barbados, this third volume of an epic story follows a family from one end of the empire to another to find a new dawn in a world which is opening up before them with greater rewards and dangers than ever before. And here we have Tread of Angels by Rebecca Rowanhorse, a fantasy grounded in a Western setting. Rebecca's created a new world in which an epic battle has lasting consequences. When Lucifer fought against God and lost, a fallen angel's resting place created a mountain range, and in those mountains was a new element called divinity. And when harvest, divinity was the rarest and most precious element in the world, and it could only be harvested by the societal pariahs known as the fallen. The fallen were descendants of Lucifer's demons, physically marked and unable, unable to hide, living as second-class citizens, while the virtues, descendants of the winners, rule over them. And when a member of the fallen is accused of murdering a member of the virtues, the small town of Goetia, which is nestled in the mountain range, will never be the same. 
And next, the last book for 2022 that I'm going to highlight today is Why We Meditate, The Science and Practice of Clarity and Compassion. We all experience negative emotions from time to time, but in a world with as much frenzy and pressure as ours, it's incredibly easy for those same emotions to become destructive. Now, by blending Eastern tradition with Western science, Why We Meditate effortlessly helps readers embrace and understand meditation as never before. With accessible and eye-opening advice based on groundbreaking neuroscience, this guidebook helps readers to not only break free from negative patter patterns of thought and behavior, but radically embrace their very beings. Revolutionizing health, relationships, and soul with this book is perfect for both serious meditators and those new to the practice. Moving on to a preview of some of our spring 2023 titles, here we have The New Life by Tom Crew. In the summer of 1894, John Addington and Henry Ellis begin writing a book arguing that what they call inversion or homosexuality is a natural, harmless variation of human behavior. Though they've never met, John and Henry both live in London with their wives, Catherine and Edith, and in each marriage, there's a third party. John has a lover, a working class man named Frank, and Henry's wife, Edith, spends almost as much time with her friend, Angelica, as she does with Henry. Shortly before their book is set to be published, however, Oscar Wilde is arrested. John and Henry must decide whether to go on risking social ostracism and imprisonment or to give up the project for their own safety and the safety of their loved ones. They have to ask themselves, is this the right moment to advance their cause? Is publishing bravery or foolishness? And what price is too high to pay for a new way of living? This is The Night Travelers by Armando Lucas Correa, the best-selling author of The German Girl. In Berlin, 1931, we meet Ali Keller, a talented young poet who's alone and scared when she gives birth to a mixed race daughter she names Lilith, who she must eventually send away to keep safe from the growing Nazi regime. In Havana, 1958, we meet an adult Judith who has a few memories of her mother and uh, who has few memories of her mother or childhood in Germany. Her own future with a Cuban pilot with strong ties to the Batista government is in peril and Lilith must try and keep her daughter Nadine safe. And going back to Berlin, this time in 1988, we meet the grown-up Nadine, a scientist who has spent her entire lifetime avoiding the truth about her family's history. It takes Nadine's daughter, Luna, to encourage her to uncover the truth about the choices her mother and grandmother made to ensure the survival of their children. And then it will fall to Luna to come to terms with the shocking betrayal that changes everything she thought she knew. And then from Stephen Markley, the best-selling author of Ohio, Comes the Deluge, a masterful American epic charting a near future approaching collapse. In the first decades of the 21st century, the world is convulsing. Its governments mirrored in gridlock while a patient but unrelenting ecological crisis looms. America is an upheaval battered by violent weather and extreme politics. In California, 2013, Tony Pietras, a scientist setting deposits of undersea methane, receives a death threat. His fate will become bound to a stunning cast of characters, including a brazen young activist named Kate Morris, who in the mountains of Wyoming begins a project that will alter the course of the decades to come. From the Gulf Coast to LA, Midwest to Washington, DC, their entwined odysseys unfold against a stark backdrop of accelerating chaos as they summon courage, galvanize a nation, fall to their own fear, and find wild hope in the face of staggering odds. As their stories hurtle towards a spectacular climax, each face is a reckoning. What will they sacrifice to salvage humanity's last chance at a future? Two Colombian expats meet as strangers on the rainy streets of New York, both burdened with traumatic pasts. In Cuba, a woman discovers her deceased brother's bones have been stolen and the love of her life returns from Ecuador for a one night visit. And a cash strapped couple hustles in Miami to life altering ends. The Faraway World by Patricia Engel is a collection of arresting stories from the New York Times bestselling author of Infinite Country. Intimate and panoramic, these stories bring to life the liminality of regret, the vibrancy of community, and the epic deeds and quiet moments of love. Next, this is Looking for Jane by Heather Marshall. For fans of Kristen Hanna and Jennifer Chiaverini, this powerful debut follows three women whose lives are bound together by a long lost letter, a mother's love, and a secret network of women fighting for the right to choose, inspired by true events. A story told in three timelines, we readers will bounce between the 1970s, 1980s, and modern days as three women face impossible circumstances and whose choices all lead them to the same secret underground abortion network known only by its whispered code name, Jane. Don't Fear the Reaper is the page-turning sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw from New York Times bestselling author Stephen Graham Jones. Four years after her tumultuous senior year, Jade Daniels is released from prison right before Christmas, when her conviction is overturned. But life beyond bars takes a dangerous turn as soon as she returns to Proof Rock, Idaho. 
convicted serial killer Dark Mill South seeking revenge for 38 Dakota men hanged in 1862, escapes from his prison transfer due to a blizzard just outside of Proof Rock. Dark Mill South's reunion tour, as he calls it, began, begins on December 12th, uh, 2019, a Thursday. When the dust clears on Friday the 13th, 36 hours later, 20 people will be dead. Is Jade one of them? And then this is Big Swiss by Jen Began. Greta lives with her friend Sabine in an ancient Dutch farmhouse in Hudson, New York, spending her days transcribing therapy sessions for a sex coach who calls himself Ohm. She becomes infatuated with his newest client, a repressed married woman she affectionately refers to as Big Swiss, since she's tall, stoic, and originally from Switzerland. Greta is fascinated by Big Swiss's refreshing attitude towards trauma. And one day, Greta even recognizes Big Swiss's voice in the dog park. In a panic, she introduces herself with a fake name and they quickly become enmeshed. Although Big Swiss is unaware of Greta's true identity, Greta has never been more herself with anyone. Her attraction to Big Swiss overrides her guilt and soon she'll do anything to sustain the relationship. Next, 1950s Philadelphia. 15-year-old Ruby Pearsall is on track to becoming the first in her family to attend college in spite of having a mother more interested in keeping a man than raising a daughter. But a taboo love affair threatens to pull her back down into the poverty and desperation that has been passed on to her like a birthright. Meanwhile, Eleanor, Eleanor Quarles ar arrives in Washington, D.C. with ambition and secrets. Eleanor hopes that a baby will finally make her feel at home in her husband William's affluent, prestigious family and grant her the life she's been searching for. But having a baby and fitting in is easier said than done. With their stories colliding in the most unexpected of ways, Ruby and Eleanor will both make decisions that shape the trajectory of their lives. From Sadiqa Johnson, the award-winning author of Yellow Wife comes The House of Eve, a daring, beautiful, and redemptive novel that explores what it means to be a woman and a mother and how much one is willing to sacrifice to achieve her greatest goal. Alex has all but given up on her dreams of becoming a published author when she receives a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, attend an exclusive month-long writing retreat at the estate of feminist horror writer Rosa Vallow. Even the knowledge that Ren, her former best friend and current rival, is attending doesn't dampen her excitement. But when the attendees arrive, Rosa drops a bombshell. They must all complete an entire novel from scratch during the next month, and the author of the best one will receive a life-changing seven-figure publishing deal. Man, NaNoWriMo has never been more intense. Determined to win this seemingly impossible contest, contest, Alex buckles down and tries to ignore the strange happenings at the estate, including Rosa's erratic behavior, Ren's mind games, and the alleged haunting of the mansion itself. Though one of the writers vanishes during a snowstorm, Alex realizes things aren't just strange, they're sinister. With the clock running on she, out, she's desperate to discover the truth and save herself. A claustrophobic and propulsive thriller exploring the dark side of fame, the writing retreat by Julia Bartz is the unputdownable debut novel from a compelling new talent. And in 1999, MIT admitted to discriminating against women on its faculty, forcing institutions across the country to confront a problem they had long ignored, the need for more women at the top levels of science and the barriers that are keeping them from it. Written by the journalist who broke the story for the Boston Globe, The Exceptions, Nancy Hopkins, MIT, and the Fight for Women in Science by Kate Zernicke is the untold story of how 16 highly accomplished women on the MIT faculty came together to do the work that triggered the historic admission. As in bestsellers Hidden Figures, uh, Lab Girl, and Code Girls, readers are offered a rare, rare glimpse into the world of high-level scientific research and learn about the extraordinary female scientists whose work has been overlooked throughout history and how they fought for fair treatment as they struggled to receive the recognition they rightfully deserve. Kate will also be participating in next month's uh, Library Journal Day of Dialogue event, so be sure to catch her there. Next, this is The Lost English Girl by Julia Kelly, Liverpool, 1935. Raised in a strict Catholic family, Viv Bryan knows exactly what's expected of her. Marry a Catholic man from a working class neighborhood and have his children. Instead, she finds herself pregnant after a fling with Joshua Levinson, a Jewish man with dreams of becoming a famous jazz musician. Viv knows that a swift wedding is the only answer. Her only solace is that marrying Joshua will mean escaping her strict mother's scrutiny. But when Joshua makes a life-changing choice on their wedding day, Viv is forced once again into the arms of her disapproving family. Five years later on the eve of World War II, Viv is faced with the impossible choice to evacuate her young daughter, Maggie, to the countryside estate of the affluent Thomas family. In New York, Joshua gives up his failing music career to serve in the Air Force, fight for his country, and try to piece together his feelings about the family, wife, and daughter he left behind at 18. However, tragedy strikes when Viv learns that the countryside safe haven she sent her daughter to wasn't immune from the horrors of war. 
It's only years later with Joshua's help that Viv learns the secrets of their shared past and what it will take to put a family back together again. From Jeanette Walls, the number one New York Times bestselling author of The Glass Castle and our future preview speaker, comes Hang the Moon, a riveting new novel about an indomitable young woman in Virginia during Prohibition. Sally Kincaid is the daughter of the biggest man in a small town, the charismatic Duke. Born at the turn of the 20th century into a life of comfort and privilege, Sally remembers little about her mother who died in a violent argument with her father. By the time she's eight, Duke has remarried and has a new son, Eddie. After an accident involving Eddie, Sally is cast out. Nine years later, she returns determined to reclaim her place, a goal that's a lot more complicated than she expected as she enters a world of conflict and lawlessness. Sally must confront the secrets and scandals that hide in the shadows of the big house, navigate the factions in the family and town, and finally come into her own as a bold, sometimes reckless bootlegger. Next. Viscount Penville has been working for years to buy back his ancestral home, Trethwick Abbey, from his estranged uncle. He's thrilled when said uncle announced he's finally ready to sell, but of course there's a catch. Penville must marry his uncle's ward, Jane. When the two meet in London, neither is impressed. Penville finds Jane headstrong and sharp tongue. Jane finds him cold and aloof, tale as old as time. Nevertheless, they agree to a marriage in name only and return to the estate. There, Jane enlists her housekeeper for a scheme, stage a haunting so that her new husband will return to London, leaving her to do whatever she wants at the Abbey. But Penville is made of sterner stuff, and as their time together passes, Jane realizes that she might not mind her husband's company all that much. The fourth book in the Regency Vows series, To, in, to Swoon and to Spar, Ma Martha Waters crafts another delightful romp for all historical romance fans. And just a little taste of the latest novel from New York Times bestselling author, Megan Miranda. Her latest, The Only Survivors, is a thrilling mystery about a group of former classmates who reunite to mark the 10th anniversary of a tragic accident, only to have one of the survivors disappear, casting fear and suspicion on the original tragedy. Next. Richmond, Virginia, 1811. It's the height of the winter social season. The General Assembly is in session and many of Virginia's gentlemen planter, planters, along with their families, have made the long journey to the capital in hopes of whiling away the darkest days of the year. At the city's only theater, the Charleston-based Placid and Green Company puts on two plays a night to meet the high demand. On the night after Christmas, the theater is packed with more than 600 holiday revelers. When the theater goes up in flames in the middle of the performance, four very different attendees make a series of split second decisions that will not only affect their own lives, but those of countless others. And in the days following the fire, as news of the disaster spreads across the country, the paths of these four people will become forever intertwined. Based on the true story of Richmond's theater fire, The House is on Fire by Rachel Beanland offers proof that sometimes in the midst of great tragedy, we are offered our most precious and fleeting chances at redemption. And lastly, we have Pomegranate by Helen Elaine Lee. Renita Atwater is, quote, getting short. She is almost done with her four-year sentence for opiate possession at Oak Hills Correctional Center. With three years of sobriety, she's determined to stay clean and regain custody of her two children. My name is Renita, and I'm an addict, she has said again and again at a recovery center. She claims the story housed within her pomegranate-like heart, determined to, serve up, to confront the weight of her past and discover what might lie beyond mere survival. Perfect for fans of Jessamyn Ward, Pomegranate is a complex portrayal of queer Black womanhood and marginalization in America, a story of loss, healing, redemption, and strength. And that is everything for me, so I'll throw it back to Michelle. Thank you, Melissa and Nicole. And thank you all. I've been watching the chat. I'm not sure why, but I wasn't able to respond. But thank you, Nicole, for putting in the information as a reminder for the preview. If you'd like to be invited to either our children's or adult previews, simply email us. The email is here on your screen now, education.library at simonandschuster.com. Thank you so much for all the feedback in the chat. We're glad to see that you're excited about so many of the titles and we appreciate all that you do and we hope to see you sometime in an in-person conference so take care and enjoy the rest of the afternoon thank you so much